Hi, my name is Denny Nativel. I'm leading the platform security team at Sci5. And today I'm very excited to show you this little box. This is about WIS5. This is about security. This is the world's first live demo of WorldGuard. WorldGuard is a hardware-enforced open and scalable multi-domain architecture that protects all bus masters, including CPU cores, DMA controllers, as well as memories and peripherals. If you recall, WorldGuard has been announced last October as part of sci 5 Shield open secure platform architecture. In order to demonstrate how WorldGuard works, we actually put together a simple yet powerful demo around an RT FPGA board that includes two sci 5 RIS-5 E31 cores, one SRAM block, one crypto accelerator that supports AES Shine TRNG, two UARTs, some GPIO, and a QuadSpy interface. We then added the necessary WorldGuard widgets, such as a WorldGuard marker for each core and for the JTAG interface as well. We then added a number of WorldGuard filters to protect the crypto engine, UARTs, and GPIOs. The SRAM itself is protected via a more sophisticated filter that is called WorldGuard PMP and that allows memory regions to be defined with attributes. In addition to the FPGA board, we used also a Raspberry Pi combined with a small TFT display and a serial port expansion board to capture and display the output of the two UART ports found on the FPGA board. Every transaction issued, issued by any of the Burstmaster is marked uh, with an identifier called wall ID. Filters found on memories and peripherals contain an access control list that indicates which wall ID has access to a given resource. The purpose of the demo is fairly simple. All cores and tasks are running a piece of code that tries to read a secret AES key from a private memory space in order to decrypt a public but encrypted message. As mentioned before, the system is composed by two with 5 cores that we will call Core 0 and Core 1. At boot, only Core 0 can change the world guard configuration, including the world ID of each bus master and the corresponding filter permissions. Core 0 runs a bare metal application contained into world ID number 1. Core 1 is even more interesting since it runs a full blown Freertos instance. There is a privileged task that contains a small security monitor and that is responsible for changing the wall ID of its own core, core 1, but within a restricted wall ID range. This change is based upon the process ID of the task running on that particular core. So in addition to have one wall per core, per core we can also have one wall per task. When this privileged task runs, its code will be marked with wall ID 2. We then have two additional and unprivileged tasks that run under wall ID 3 and wall ID number 4. In addition to wall guard, the RIS-5 physical memory protection or PMP is also active on core 1 and enforces protection between the two unprivileged tasks. When wall guard is disabled, the keys are only protected by the PMP found in core 1. This is enough protection to prevent task A or task B to obtain keys they are not supposed to access, but it doesn't prevent the privileged task on Core 1 to read all the secret keys. This is also true for Core 0, that has full access to all keys as well. If we look at the left screen, when WorldGuard is disabled, we can see that Core 0 is able to read all the secret keys, since its PMP is not active, and then decrypt all the messages, even those that were not dedicated to this core. If we now look at the right screen when WorldGuard is disabled, then we can see that the task A running on core 1 can only access the secret key of this particular task, but cannot read the secret key of the other task or the one belonging to the core 0. The PMP still protects task A from task B, so task A cannot read the secret key material of task B, for example. But nothing prevents the privileged task to access the secret key of core 0, since it can manipulate the PMP configuration. When WorldGuard is active, then all cores are protected, including Core 0, that no longer has access to keys dedicated to Core 1. Core 1 is also able to change the world ID of its own core to match the current running task 
whether it is a privileged task under wall ID 2, the task A under wall ID 3, and the task B under wall ID 4. It is important to notice that the privileged task on core 1 can no longer access the key 0 that is tied to core 0. If we look at the left screen when wall guard is enabled, we can see that core 0 can read its own key and can decrypt its message, but fails to read other secret keys, such as the key dedicated to core 1 and used by wall ID number 3 and wall ID number 4. The wall guard PMP detects the intrusion and reports the attempt to access a protected memory space from an unauthorized wall ID. If we look at the right screen when wall guard is enabled, we can see that it operates quite similar to that when wall guard uh, was disabled, but with a huge difference, where even the privileged task on the wall ID 2 uh, that could clear the core PMP configuration can no longer read the secret key of the core 0 found in wall 1. This clearly shows the simplicity of the mechanism and the unique level of security it adds and thus without redesigning the complete software architecture. WallGuard is here to bring the RISC-5 architecture to another level, where security meets simplicity. This comes from the fact that we are not touching the RISC-5 ASA, so the code that is actually running on a particular core is not even being aware of, of uh, uh, being constrained into a given world with limited resources. This is a true game changer that allows greater software portability while guaranteeing true hardware isolation. I hope that you enjoyed this quick introduction to uh, the first live demo of WorldGuard. Please do not hesitate to get back to me or to your local sci fi contact if you have questions or if you, have, if you need more details. In the meantime, stay tuned because there are more sci fi Shield announcements coming out soon. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.